Hey everyone, it's Caitlin. Welcome back to Bandit and Cass. Today I will be going over my go-to daily and weekly logs and how I plan every single week. So before I get into that, here's a quick look at my key. These are gonna be some symbols that I'll be using throughout the video. So if you're not familiar with that, go back to this point and hopefully it will clarify some stuff. And besides that, let's get into it and start by setting up my go-to daily log spread. If I had to think about what spread would compose the majority of my bullet journal, it would definitely be this one. Daily logs make up most of my notebook by a long shot. And because I'm making them so often, I like to keep my layouts really simple so they're easy to maintain and recreate. Although I really like the original bullet journal method daily logs, one thing that I like to add in addition to that is starting my week with a weekly task list. I like to do this by just taking one page, usually on the left side for some reason, and making a Alistair method to-do list so that I can see all the tasks that I have to do that week. This also gives me a good opportunity to brain dump all of my tasks and have a kind of landing page when I think about something that I need to do and when I want to write that down. So if you do want to learn more about this to-do list style method, I do have a video on it but pretty much this method allows me to schedule tasks in advance so I can figure out how I wanna break up my week and how I want to do things so that I don't have to do everything on one day. One way I like to customize this spread is by taking the bottom two squares and blocking it off with the line so I can go ahead and add a little weekly habit tracker. I really like making this for habits that I really want to hone in on and focus on that week. So this week, I really want to focus on my water consumption and my vitamin consumption because I've noticed that I've been slipping on that a little bit. And with those habits all set up with the weekly task list, I can now move into my actual daily logs. In order to make my daily logs, I like to layer the abbreviated day of the week. And then I draw a horizontal line to kind of mark off the day. And then I write the date over top of that. Usually after this, I just go ahead and I write down my events and tasks for the day in the rapid log style of the original bullet journal method. And then what I'll also do is I'll go through my task list that I just created and see if I have any tasks already scheduled for that day that I can migrate over. I really like rewriting my tasks because I find it kind of annoys me into doing them because I don't like writing things over and over again. And it also allows me to see what I have to do that specific day. And then I can also better see how much I've accomplished each day. I find this allows me to better understand how much time each task takes and how many tasks I can realistically do in a day. Usually once the day is over in the evening or afternoon, I'll go ahead and I'll cross off the tasks I completed. And then I'll also go ahead and update my weekly task list. For tasks that I've fully completed, I like to draw a horizontal line. And this is because some tasks take up multiple days. So while I may have completed the task on Monday, I still need to work on it Tuesday and Wednesday. So once all of those days are done, then I draw the horizontal line to indicate that it's completely finished. So I know that was quite a lot of information packed into a couple minutes, but now we are going to be moving on to a couple of ways I like to modify and customize this daily log that I'm not doing this specific week, but I'll do other weeks depending on my needs. So the first customization I like to make to my daily logs is adding a time ladder. I really enjoyed using these when I had my first week of classes and I want to visualize when I had time to get things done and what time I actually had classes during. So this is just a quick example of how I would set up this time ladder. I go ahead and I make my usual daily log. I rapid log all the stuff I have going on and then directly under the line I write the hours 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. and that represents the hours of the day that I want to keep track of. Then I can go in and I can use a marker to mark off times during the day that I maybe have a class going on or an event so I can better see when I have time to do my tasks. Based on that time, I will also go in and add my AM PM signifiers. And this helps me kind of delegate tasks to the morning or afternoon based on how much time I have. So that is the first little customization I like to do. Now I'm gonna move into the second customization that I just discovered, which is creating a little daily habit tracker. 
So instead of putting the time ladder right under the line, I am drawing a habit tracker. This one is for water consumption, so I plan to fill in the eight little circles with the eight cups of water that I will hopefully be drinking. And I think that will be a good way for me to really hone in and keep track of a habit that I kind of need to really improve on. So that is one example of another way that I like to customize this tracker. Another thing I want to quickly mention is that while I like to do the lettered headers, sometimes I completely ignore that and I just go ahead and rapid log for the day. This is actually another reason why I really like the daily log layout I have right now. And that's because I can go in and add the titles later if I want to. But if I just want to sit down and brain dump my blog for the day, I can go ahead and do that without having to break out my brush pens if I don't want to. So although I use the daily log probably 80% of the time when I'm doing my weekly spreads, I did want to show you guys a second spread that I like to make sometimes, which is my weekly log. So this is a take on the rolling weekly, but it's a little bit different and I'll explain those differences in a little bit. But the first thing I like to do is just like my daily log, I like to go ahead and take one page for my weekly to-do list. This is another example of how I write out my weekly to-do list. Although sometimes I like the Alistair method checklist, sometimes I'll just do a standard two column checklist and I'll break down personal tasks on the left and then school tasks on the right. And this can be a really great way for me to visualize what I have to do for different areas of my life. Once I have my checklist done, I go ahead and I set up my weekly. This is a bit different than the daily log where you set up each day as you go. Instead with the weekly log, you actually set up all of your days in advance. And because of that, I like to create a really, really simple layout. So I like to save time on things like shortening the title so it's just the first letter of the day. So it doesn't take as much time for me to letter and only including details in the spread that I need in order for it to be functional. Once I've created the date of the week and the day of the week at the top, I go in and add a time ladder. This one is actually vertical compared to the horizontal one you saw in the daily log. And in this one, I'm writing the hours 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. And then on the weekends, I like to just write morning, afternoon, and evening because I try not to have a lot of stuff going on. So that works really well for my schedule. Then whenever I really want to, because these are all set up in advance, I can go ahead and write my events in the time ladder. And then I use the bottom half of the spread for tasks and due dates. Another way I like to customize the spread is similar to the daily log. And that's by making this beautiful horizontal line, two boxes up. Sometimes I'll use the left-hand side for habit tracking, like I showed you in my daily logs. And then I'll use the space underneath each day of the week to track either a specific habit like water consumption, which I'm showing you here. Or another thing I like to do is take the space underneath each day to record what kind of workout I did so I can keep track of my fitness. So that is a quick look at my weekly spread. I did forget to draw the line on that second side of the page, but normally I would do the line across all the pages. So sorry, just a little aside there. But that is a quick overview of the two main spreads I like to use whenever I set up my bullet journal every week. I hope that by seeing these two spreads, it gave you guys some ideas on how you can make your own daily and weekly spreads that work for your needs and are simple and customized to your lifestyle. And if you're still here, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.